Our guest speaker this evening is Tim Rickey. Tim will be providing us with a speech followed by a breakdown of how Toastmasters meetings are presented at each session. Tim has been a Toastmaster for 12 years. He mentors other Toastmasters to the World Championship of Public Speaking. There are 30,000 Toastmasters trying to reach the final round. Two of Tim's three students have reached that final round. One, James Webb, came in third in the world. Can you guess how James makes his living today? Hmm. Mr. Ricky will start out with a seven minute speech that drew vast attention because it's so, it was so completely different and he wondered why no one noticed that the speech is almost like a song. <laughs> so, this ties in, just so you know, with what it is that we're gonna be doing, presentation skills, communication skills, and so I've asked him to come and talk to you all about starting a Toastmasters chapter here at this campus. Okay, so thank you, Tim. Thank you, and if I show up often enough, I guess I get a degree. <laughs> <laughs> to Honorary, of course. <laughs> I had noticed something as a former entertainer that there's a relationship between speaking and singing or doing a song. Now, you may not think so, but let me explain what I mean. In a speech, there are components. You have an opening, a body, and a close. Just like you do in an advertisement, just like you do in a letter. A song also has those three components in it. In a speech, you have an opening that is powerful get people's attention. In this case, because I'm prepping for it, I didn't give you one. <laughs> Generally, I would shock you with something to get your full attention on me. There's one way I know how to get your attention completely real quick. Are you wondering what's he going to say next? That gets people's attention. Remember that. Pauses. You say nothing and you get more attention. It doesn't sound like it should work that way, but it does. So, you get a you open with something as powerful as you would in a speech, you would do that in a song. So did you get people's attention so they'll listen on and on? Uh, Jay Spector, who just went to jail for killing somebody years ago, was one of the greatest selector of songs that's ever existed. He could hear the first few words of a song and tell you it would be a number one hit. He was really quite good at that because he knows the opening is that important to him. Also, when you do a speech, you tell little stories, little vignettes, and you tie them together to get a complete picture of exactly what you're trying to provide your audience. Does that happen in a song? Yes. They're called verses, right? So it's almost like a song. And then between those, you have in a song choruses. In a speech, you have things that tie them together the theme because you see that's almost like a song. Guess what the theme of this speech is? That it's almost like a song. You see it reoccurred twice now. In my speaking it was also in the introduction. So you see those things all tie together in speaking and in speeches. So there are other things though that a speaker doesn't think of but if you realize this in looking at songs, music, and singers, does a singer just stand there like this? No, they're singing. I know I do. I don't hold back when I sing. And if it wasn't here, I would finish this speech with a song called It's Almost Like a Song by Ronnie Milstadt because it goes all kinds of degrees. So you have gestures that go with a song. You see them reach up or really hit the guitar, whatever it might be, they put that into the song. Same thing you should do with speech. Put the gestures in there. Tuesday night, somebody came up to me and said, would you please go teach my professors how to move around a little bit? <laughs> I said, what do you mean? Well, they just stand there. He says, and I like the fact that you move a bit. I said, well, thank you. I appreciate that. But it's, that's what Toastmasters does for you. They'll teach you the very finer points of public speaking because that is what makes for a better speaker. A lot of people will, and I've seen seminars where they do seminars and they're very dull because they never were trained as a Toastmaster, they just started doing little things and, and it led to this, and, but it didn't ever pick up the, the, the real sensitive, good skills that make all the difference in the world. So now you've got a song that's got verses against stories. You have a chorus, which is like a theme. You have body language, you have gestures. All of these things play into a song and into a speech. So when you are 
ready to embark on that journey of learning to be a speaker, would it be a good idea to apply those as you do? There's also something in the song. Did you ever notice that you can remember a song all the way through, but if you had it written out word for word, you tried to actually remember to say it word for word, it's very hard without the music. I know. I, or people say to me, well, what songs do you know? And I think, I know 300 songs, and I can't think of any of them. But if they give me just a couple bits of melody, it's, oh, well, I know this one, that one. Because that musical flow makes all the difference. So if you apply that to a speech, try to see what the flow is. And by the way, a speech in Toastmasters is generally seven minutes, which means 1,000 words for men. And women, you talk a little faster, so you only get 900. <laughs> That's fact, I'm sorry. That's the way it is. <laughs> and if you know that when you type out a speech, you know that you're right on time. When we have a Toastmaster meeting, and I'm going to go through that in a little bit, we have a time right down to almost a minute. Every single week, we have such a good system there. So keep in mind that any time you're going to do a speech, see if you can find a place in that speech where you would emphasize a, a raised voice like you would with a lyric. And one of the ways you can do it is if you're going to read the speech or have it in front of you where you can at least see it, look, use a different felt marker, light green for going up, pink for going down, then you know exactly what you're supposed to do when you're looking at that. It can work on an outline, anything along those lines that work in all of those areas. So in conclusion, just remember that speeches have stories, speeches have themes, speeches have gestures, vocal variety, all of the things necessary to make a singer a singer. So if you remember that, when you go to a speech, you'll have a pretty good idea of where you're going. That's it for this. Thank you.